ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار The last, last thing we spoke about was uh, uh, donkeys, right, and mules. طيب قال المؤلف رحمه الله وما يأكل الجيف الجيف من الطير. He's still talking about uh, what's haram to eat from the uh, animals that live uh, uh, fishes. In the sea, and uh, he said, and the birds, we know most birds are permissible except those uh, that uh, uh, fall the beach, as we will uh, see in a little bit. But uh, the birds that are permissible, but sometimes because of what they eat, they become harm, and that is the uh, birds. Uh, that eat deer. Uh, and deer is dead animal, dead meat. Uh, if you see birds that eat that, they call them jalala. Jalala. The birds that eat uh, meat call them the ulama jalala. And these birds, if their food is this meat, يعني you find some chicken uh, to raise them to get them fatter or heavier they feed them uh, corn mixed with uh, beef mixed with meat just to get them uh, fat protein, protein so once they start or they they alhamdulillah <coughs> Once they start eating that, automatically they become forbidden to eat. Tayyib, how can I get them out of this? You get them out of this, as he said, Rahimahullah, Yahramu akluha hatta tuhbas. Tuhbas. A yani tuhbas. Yani, huh? Yani, they will take these animals. And I always thought ducks are okay too. Then uh, I realized when we throw the meat, uh, excess meat, at home in the backyard for the cat or whatever, that's come to eat it. Okay? So eat chicken. You know, ducks are permissible to eat. They don't have any reason to be. But once they start feeding on chicken or on meat, they become haram. So the only way to get them back to be halal is by uh, restraining them. يعني caging them or putting them in, in a seclusion, separate place that they don't have access to this meat that they're gonna eat, to dead animals they're gonna see and eat, to meat that people will give them until they cleanse their system. And the ulama talk about how many days, some said three, some said seven, whatever the situation is. And this is يعني, the, perhaps it's the experts, but that is how you get them back to be permissible, even chicken. Okay, even even chicken. So <clears throat> also chickens. You find some people say chicken eat their uh, feces. Huh? Whatever they excrete, they eat. That is the same situation. قال وما يستخبث من الحشرات. Also uh, other things that are not permissible to eat, as he said, رحمه الله. Malicious this uh, insects that people consider disgusting. Okay. يعني النفس البشرية لا تقبل. Huh? The, the human uh, taste. يعني feel disgusted of. That is becomes automatically haram. Huh? Where people are accustomed to consider something 
not pleasant, malicious, disgusting. That is haram to eat. Even if someone will come up and say, it's not disgusting to me. No. Whatever shari'a, yani shari'a, whatever Allah, the Messenger, وسلم, the law of Allah, said is, is disgusting, is disgusting. Whatever the people are accustomed and urf to consider something disgusting, is disgusting. Huh? Yani for example, someone will say, uh, is eating uh, cockroaches haram? Well, cockroaches, not eating them, but looking at them is disgusting. You know, dealing with them is disgusting. No one wants them in his home. No one wants them around. Okay? So how can, can someone will say, there is no daddy to say it's haram. You understand? So that is what they refer to. And when they say, وَمَا يُسْتَخْبَثُ وَمَا يُسْتَخْبَثُ مِنَ الْحَشَرَاتِ فَكُلُّ مَا اسْتَخْبَثَهُ الشَّارِعِ فَهُوَ خَبِيثٌ وَمَا لَمْ يَسْتَخْبِثُهُ الشَّارِعِ فَلَا يَكُونُ خَبِيثًا ما لم يرد فيه نص من من الشارع وتستخبثه العقول فإنه أيضا يكون خبيث. When even if there is no dalil, but the people consider it to be disgusting and unacceptable, then that goes to follow the same rule. And that يعني so if the insects that might not be harmful to eat, but because they're considered disgusting are haram. So that puts us, يعني, uh, there is no escape when it comes to this issue, the issue of what's disgusted and what's not pleasant to be haram, bring the issue of cigarettes. So the issue of cigarettes, <laughs> uh, it wasn't planned, يعني, I'm not saying it because you're here. <laughs> the issue of cigarettes, يعني, it's, it's something unpleasant. Huh? Cigarettes are unpleasant. Not, even, not taste, not smell, not uh, cause, not effect, not results, not uh, diseases. Let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about wasting money. So the, even if there is no daddy, someone will ask for daddy. Whatever يعني, considered to be disgusting should be uh, forbidden to use. That is the bottom line. Okay, very simple thing. لا ضرر ولا ضرار. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَرَحَمُ بِكُمْ And do not uh, harm yourself and do not kill, kill yourself. So, يعني, uh, people who ask for the lead, there's difference between people who smoke and they know it's, they say it's haram. And those who smoke and they say there is no deleed, it's haram. You know? يعني, such person, uh, يعني, they're both, in my opinion, uh, should stop and they're both doing something bad. But يعني, uh, at different levels. Huh? Uh, so something for them to reconsider. So obviously, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وَيُحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ." Make permissible for them good things and make haram for them bad things. Huh? everything that is not acceptable, everything that people refrain from or they do not accept. قال الوزير بن هبيرة اتفقوا على أن حشرات الأرض محرمة. They all agreed, the ulama, that the insects of the earth are forbidden. The insects of the earth. So eating uh, bugs uh, <laughs> isn't permissible. Eating uh, mosquitoes isn't permissible. All these things are things that not to be taken. قال إلا مالكا فإنه كرهها في رواية. قال كل he said, when it comes to insects, Malik, rahimahullah, Malik, in one riwayah, he said it's not recommended, but not, not haram. But the, obviously the opinion of the rest of the ulama is the greatest. And this is one of his opinion, in one of his opinion. That means he, he has other opinions. وَقَالَ كَالْفَأْرِ وَنَحْوِهِ So now, everything that people treat or regard as disgusting is forbidden to eat, and then he gives you the example, he said, like mouse. And what's similar to mouse, okay? And we know in mouse, the Prophet ﷺ called it al-fuwaysiqa. Huh? Yani, there, no, there is no natural, normal human being huh, except to have a mouse on his plate. All right? So, but that's it. When, when the, when in, in al-fitra, mankusa, Huh? When the fitrah of the human being is completely off the hook and out of place, يعني, these things become normal to them. قال إلا اليربع. 
uh, the arbu' is like small animal in the desert. Okay. Uh, they also call it the jarbu'. Okay. They also call it the jarbu'. And actually, that is what they call it in English. Jarbu'. Huh? J a j e r b o a. And uh, it's like an animal, small animal, lives in the desert and jumps, huh? just like a kangaroo, huh? hopping, hopping around. And that is permissible, permissible to eat. Umar radiallahu an hakama fihi bi jafr. Why it's permissible? What is the dalil that this small animal is permissible? Because when someone in the Hajj uh, hunted it, huh? And you know when you're in Ihram, you're not allowed to hunt. Uh, Umar radiallahu an ruled uh, to compensate that with Jafra, which is Unta uh, walad al-Ma'iz, the goat uh, son female, female, yeah, the daughter of uh, of a goat, and which is similar in uh, in behavior. So the fact, because we know what you're not allowed to 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 hunt while you're in Ihram is what you can eat, okay? If you hunt a lion, there's no problem with that. That's a beast. We said it has to be domesticated and it has to be edible. Nah? That is the hunting that is not allowed while you're in Ihram or in the Haram, okay? So the fact that Umar radiallahu ruled that you need to, uh, to, to sacrifice a goat because you caught or you hunted uh, the Arbu'ah, Indicates that it's side, it's side. Indicates that it's permissible, permissible to eat. قال والضب لأنه أكل على مائدة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو ينظر وقيل له أحرام هو قال لا. الضب it's like a lizard, okay. It's like a lizard, but it's much bigger, okay? It's a little bigger, or it's a little bigger, and it got uh, some kind of spiny tail. Huh? It's a little bigger of a lizard. Uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma reported that the Prophet وسلم, Khalid bin Walid was with the Prophet وسلم, and they were uh, like in some area, and they were given uh, by the host food. So the Prophet وسلم, asked what it was, he said, Bob. Okay, so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rafa yada, and he was about to eat from it. When he asked what it was, they told him it's a dab. فقيل فرفع يده فقيل يا رسول الله أحرام هو قال لا ولكنه لم يكن بأرض قومي فأجد نفسي تعاف. He said they asked him when the Prophet sallam he want to eat from it. When he found out what it was, the slizzard, he took his hand back. So they asked him, is it haram, Ya Rasulullah? He said, no, but it's not something my people, yeah, including me, accustomed to eat. Huh? We're not accustomed to eat. Huh? It's not, we don't find it in our land. It, we're not accustomed to eat it. So yeah, I, mean, I don't feel comfortable eating it. Okay? And that is natural. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, when you're not accustomed to eat certain type of food, you just don't eat it. It's not because it's haram. Just, يعني, naturally, you're not, you're not used to eat this kind of food, so you don't eat it. Huh? يعني, give me whatever, I won't eat sushi. I just can't eat it, okay? Uh, that's the bottom line. You're just not used to it. A lot of people, when they're not used to something, they don't eat it. So that is what happened. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he took like this uh, uh, lizard, the bug, Huh? He said, it's not haram, clearly, but I don't feel comfortable eating it. قال خالد فاجتررته وأكلته ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوم. خالد بن وليد, huh? from the same place, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, from Mecca. So when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, I, I, don't, I don't feel like eating it, Khalid pulled the plate in front of him and he ate the whole thing. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم watching. So you see, خلاص. So some people feel, don't feel comfortable, others fine with it. Some people eat anything. Huh? Just give them something to eat, they'll eat it. 
So that is a dot. قال وما عدا هذا مباح. And everything beside that is permissible. Everything beside what? Beside the exceptions that are mentioned. Other than that, everything on earth is mubah, is permissible, huh? or permissible to eat. قال ويباح أكل الخير. Horse, eating the horse is permissible. Okay? And the ulama have different opinion regarding, regarding that. Al-Hanabila uh, wa said permissible. Al-Hanabila wa shafiiya said it's permissible to eat the horse meat. Horse meat for them is permissible. And what is their delete? Hadith Asma radiya Allahu anha fi al-Sahihayn. Dabahna ala ahdi Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam farasan wa nahnu bil madinati fa akalna. And it can get clearer than this. Asma radiya Allahu anha said, I think we talked about this. Asma radiya Allahu anha said that at the time of the Prophet in Medina, we slaughtered uh, a horse and we ate it. So obviously the Prophet didn't uh, condemn them for that or criticize them, so it's permissible. And Hadith Jabir, then the Prophet Naha Yawm Khaybar and Luhum al Humur al Ahliya wa Adina fi Luhum al Khayil. On the day of Khaybar, the Prophet forbid eating the uh, uh, the domesticated donkeys and he allowed to eat the horse meat. The other opinion which is Madhab al Hanafiya and the most uh, famous of the of al Malikiya that it's not permissible. It's not permissible. So we saw the Dalil of Shafi'i and Hanabila that it's permissible and they have two Dalils so clear and so authentic in Bukhari and Muslim. But al Hanafiya, al Ahnaf, Rahimahumullah, their opinion said it's not permissible to eat the horse. What is their Dalil? Hadith Khalid ibn al-Walid radiyallahu an Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an akli luhum al-khayl wal-bighali wal-hamir Okay? On the day of Khaybar that the Prophet ﷺ forbade eating uh, horse meat and mules and domesticated donkeys. But we said the problem with this hadith is munkar. This hadith is, is uh, fabricated because Khalid bin Walid wasn't Muslim on the day of Khaybar. When it took place, he wasn't Muslim yet. So how can he say the Prophet ﷺ forbid? So obviously, we go with the strong opinion, and that is the opinion of Shafi'i and Hanabila, that it's permissible to eat horse meat. قال وسمى الضبع صيدا. مؤلف رحمه الله consider eating the hyena permissible. The hyena. And we know hyenas have claws, have fangs, canines. And we said. كل ناب من السباع وكل ذي مخلب من الطير حرام. Prophet said animals that have canines, the nap, are not allowed to eat. And we know hyenas do have that. Okay. But the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم called the hyena الضبع صيد. And when you call something صيد, that means it's permissible to eat. And Hadith Jabir رضي الله عنه قال أمرنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بأكل الضبع فقلت يا رسول الله صيد هو قال صيد قال نعم okay صيد قال نعم وجاء في رواية أبي داود قال سألت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الضبع فقال هو صيد ويجعل فيه كبش إذا صاده المحرم so if you're in a state of ihram and you catch or you hunt a hyena, then you have to sacrifice a ram. Eh? A ram. طيب, we know, as I said, the babr got kena. So what is, how is it permissible now? Since we know the beasts with canines are not allowed to eat. So according to this hadith, there should be another uh, restriction another character of the animal that has canines to be haram. So not every animal has canines is haram. Okay? And they said 
the animals with canines that are uh, transgressors. What that means? Yani they prey. What that means? Yani they attack you. Hyenas are known not to attack. They're peaceful. So unless you mess with them, then they will defend themselves. But if you leave them alone and you don't try to mess with them, they will leave you alone. But a, a lion won't leave you alone. No? Tiger won't leave you alone. Stuff like that. So they had, yeah, they had to find another description along with the, uh, with animals with canines, huh? Uh, to make it how? Since hyena is 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 there, then they said the animals that do not prey, do not attack, huh? They don't attack, and they even if they have canines, they are permissible to to eat. So da na bil min al sibai wa an yadu bi tabi. Naturally, attacks. Huh? For no obvious reason, he will attack. Those are what's haram and what's not permissible. قال واستدل لذلك بأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سمى لحم الضبع صيبة. So Ibn Qudama, his dalil that the dhab is permissible, he said because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم called it, called it صيب. Okay? So this is very much introduction to Bab Atima, the chapter of foods uh, and drinks, and uh, we have gone through what's permissible and what's per what's not permissible, whether in the sea or or in the land. Who animals live in the sea, or live in the land, or live in between. Huh? About we will come across some of those as we. Talk about bad section. And we've talked about this already. Wait. Okay. Why we're talking about it again? When we talk about food, why we're talking about it again? And I'm stuck off. Something is perfect. That is mad. That's why when someone is more, then we say he's dead. Dead. Yeah, and he's eating. Okay. We say someone dead. Related then, when we talk about slaughtering, they said 
ذبح أو نحر الحيوان المأكول البري أو عقر ممتلئ فشمل هذا التعريف الأقسام الثلاثة قول البري طيب why they call slaughtering pet or the cat let's talk about the meaning of the cat linguistic اصطلاحا يعني من بشر لعلماء في الفقه what they refer to they say ذبح أو نحر أو عقر all these three نحر ذبح and عقر refer to the way you slaughter ذبح نحر and عقر these are three ways you slaughter any animal Okay, very much. We will come to talk about what they mean. But when they talk about the deca, they refer to one of those ways huh, to slaughter an animal. But look in the definition. They said, uh, Second, edible. Yeah, I need to eat. Which brings the idea of hunting for fun is haram. Hunting animals for fun, haram. Either you hunt it to eat it, or you hunt it to protect yourself. That's all. But going on a hunting trip and we're gonna hunt deers and just leave them rotten, that is how long. Uh, even any animal, whether it's edible or not, you can eat it or you can't. Just for fun, nah, that's a bull. It's a oppression. Yes, even if it's against animal. Even if it's against animal. But we know the exception of the part of the mention, as we had mentioned them last time. But the point is, we got better. The slaughtering, berry means wild, means that lives on the earth, on the land. So which means animals that come from the sea, you don't have to slaughter them. See? You don't slaughter fish. You don't slaughter fish. You don't slaughter whales. That's it. You put out of the water, that's it. grab her and throw her off a third floor and that's it why we don't get a rock and hit her with the head and that's it why we don't shoot her and eat her so tedkia with those methods the three methods we mentioned for a reason and that is tatib al-mudakka e tatib al-mudakka yani to make it as pure as possible pure from what pure from any dirt that might be inside pure from any filth, pure from any blood huh? that's going to stay in there. That's why you do nahr or atr or dhab to get all that out of the body. If you just grab a sheep and hit her against a car or hit a car, huh? run over a sheep, you're going to kill her. But everything will stay inside. And the blood, once, it die, once the person or the animal did, the blood starts clotting, start getting hard, okay? So it isn't easy or fun to get that blood out, all right? So the intent of tadkiyah or slaughtering according to the sharia, or according to one of those three methods, is taqib al mudak to make it good, to make it pure, to make it clean. Shuf. 
to <laughs> To make it huh, a pleasant. That's why the hikmah of slaughtering and it death key. <clears throat> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't allow, doesn't order something to be done, but for a hikmah and he is ahkam al Everything in the sea is permissible to be without slaughtering. We don't need to slaughter, as we already agreed. So you don't have to slaughter for it to be halal. If it's dead, it's halal, as long as it's from the sea. وحل لكم صيد البحر وطعامه متاعا لكم وللسيارة قال ابن عباس صيد البحر ما أخذ منه حيا وطعامه ما أخذ منه ميت So that is something clear and straightforward قال ابن قدامة إلا ما يعيش في البر فلا يحل حتى يذكر Now anything lives on the earth on the, on the land huh? on land it's not permissible to eat unless it's slaughtered. That is also understandable and accepted. <clears throat> now, also this statement can mean something else. Because he's talking about everything in the, in the sea is permissible without slaughtering. Illa Hadim Stithna refers to the animals of the sea. He's still talking about the sea. If we take that understanding, then it becomes إلا ما يعيش في البر من حيوانات البحر which is things live in between. It's from the sea, but live, survive on, the, on land. It might go out on land for mating. It might go out on land for, for eggs, for hatching, for all that. So, Everything from the sea is permissible without slaughtering except that animals or those animals from the sea that live on the land. All right? Then they're required to be slaughtered. Okay? Required to be slaughtered. Like water turtle. The, huh? uh, uh, sulhafa. Okay? Sulhafa. They're water, they're lives in the sea and, live and, and walk on, on the beach, right? This one, if you want to eat it, you're going to slaughter it, huh? Because even if you just take it like that, it's going to stay alive. So you break its shell, huh? And then you get it out and you slaughter it. So anything, all the animals from the sea, can be eaten without slaughtering unless they live on land. If they live on land, then they have to be, if they're permissible ones. So the frogs are permissible. Alligators are impermissible. I mentioned that before. What, what lives in between? They said, Kalbilma. Huh? Some animal, they call it Kalbilma. The dog, or water dog, or whatever. Okay? The sea dog. Or sea they tell you, is it permissible to eat uh, sea pig? In the sea, it's all a pig. Okay? And actually, as we mentioned, three-fourths of animals on Earth are in the sea, living there. So there is uh, a sea pig, sea dog, sea snake. Huh? I don't know if there's sea pig, but... <laughs> right? But the point is, that's it. The name really don't... You cannot take the name of it in the sea and apply it to what's similar counterpart on land. You can't do that. We said everything in the sea is permissible, inshallah. illa sarafan wa nahmu. Also live on land, he said those need to be slaughtered. 
Now he's giving you an exception. Animal live on man, but it doesn't have to be slaughtered. He said He said that. Also they call it in Sam Saburi. Sam Saburi. Saburi. Sabaton. Crab. C R A B as in boy. Alright? That is Sabaton. That is also they call it Saltaun. Right? Right. We have all these names. Okay. Why? Why crab doesn't have to be slaughtered, even though it lives in between? So, has no blood. Okay. Got no blood. And the hikmah of slaughtering is the blood. So it has no blood. So there is no need to be to be slaughtered. <laughs> Uh, and his nafs isn't say uh, doesn't doesn't any flow. So even if you if you try to slide, there's nothing to flow out. Alright? So the saratan and similar to it, the crab doesn't have to be slaughtered. قال ولا يباح من البر شيء بغير ذكات إلا الجراد وشبه. Now forget about this. We're done with that. Now anything else on the land isn't permissible without slaughtering except Al-Jarad, huh? locust or grasshopper. Jarad, we know it's permissible to eat, okay? And you don't have to slaughter it. Hey, you have to slaughter Jarad, okay? So Jarad is permissible to eat without قول عبد الله بن ابي اوفى غزونا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سبع غزوات ناكل الجرد. ها؟ huh? Seven battles we had with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم all we ate was locusts. Okay? It's all they found to eat. Why did they didn't eat dates and grass and all that? Fruit. How much probably الجرد ate of it? Ate all of it. Ha? Huh? So الجرد gets fat, they eat it. All right, so seven, seven, yeah, in battles with the Prophet Sallam as Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa radiallahu anhu said, all we ate was, was grass, so this is And also the Prophet Sallam said, Uhilla lana maytatani wa daman. Shul al maytatan? Hud? Uh-huh. عند أهل المغرب السمك يعني الحوت عندنا الحوت يعني الحوت الأزرق <تصفيق> السمك the two dead things that were allowed to eat fish and locks grass up طب الدمان liver and a tuhal, a tuhal. Huh? Pancreas? Salam. Tell it back insulin. Spleen. The spleen. It's called a tuhal. I know it's not for human being. I like the good. Alright? So, this lady and the hadith of Ibn Abi Awqa clear proves that the jarad. Locus is permissible to eat, but the Prophet said, called it meita, indication that you don't have to, to slaughter. قال والذكاة تنقسم إلى ثلاثة أقسام نحر وذبح وعقل. The three types of slaughter. You go and do, and you. No, you can't do that with all animals. Some animals are beasts, huge. You can't do that with a camel. Okay, can 
slaughter camel. Huh? You think I'm gonna lick you? Um, I need a sword to do that. No. So there are three ways to slaughter. And each way is used with specific types of animal. Okay? And we will put, is it permissible to okay. do this with this animal? And I do it with, as we will see, the difference to the sheep. And The base of the neck is to the tip. The, the, the camel is tied, tied down one of his legs, the leg. Then it is right there. The, the, where his, the end of his neck meets the beginning of his chest. They tie one of his legs up and they stab him right there. As a result, the camel will collapse, okay? And then they will finish him. That is in Nahr. So it's applicable to, to camel. Zabh, okay? <coughs> so like that. So Al-Aqr, Al-Aqr has to do with hunting, okay? When you hunt animals. You see Heard uh, you wanna you wanna shoot it with the intent you wanna eat okay. and you hit it and it falls dead. But if you did not slaughter, you did not stab it. Okay. So how is that permissible? That is called the lack. So when you hunt, it's called the لأن العقر يكون في الصيف. النحر يكون في العقر يعني يهان. الذبح is what we know. Slaughtering that we know when it comes to sheep and goats and other, uh, other stuff. But it has to have condition. So when we talk about slaughtering or الذبح, we're talking about cutting the neck. But when you cut the neck, there are specific things must be cut. Three things. Well, actually four, but two of them are the same on each side of them. Those that ulama, يعني, without any uh, disagreement, that they said the animal is permissible to eat if these four are cut. Then they differ. Are the four all required, or three enough, or two enough? We will see that when we come to that. What these three things are? Il mari. Okay. And il wajjan. And il hulqum. Hulqum. المريء يوجع الحلقوم دثرو ناو تو هاي او تو تيوب وان فور فود ذات ويل جو تو ذا ستم اند وان ويتش از كولد انجلش ذا ازابيت اوكي and one will go down to the lungs for breathing. And that's called the trachea. And the breathing pipe and the food pipe. Halkum and Mary and Lwaja. On the neck, there are two big uh, veins. 
those four things need to be cut. Those veins called jugular veins, okay? The two jugulars. Those are called, referred to as al-awdaj or al-wajja. Okay? J-U-G-U-L-A-R. Okay? So all these things need to be cut. Throat, nari, wajja. Throat, zabigis, and jugular veins. So that's it there. قال فإن نحر ما يذبح أو ذبح ما ينحر فجائز. آه. If he uses the nahr, we said the nahr with what? Camel. If he uses the nahr with what supposedly to be ذبح, like sheep, or if he uses the ذبح, like with sheep. With something supposed to get nahr, which is cam. Yani, if someone, uh, if they manage to get, uh, yeah, if they knock the camel unconscious, huh? they hit him with some kind of bullet or electrical shot, that doesn't kill him, it renders him unconscious, but he's still alive. Unconscious person, breathing. Huh? His heart is beating, he's just unaware. Okay? So now they control him. Let's say they give him general anesthesia. Possible. Yeah. Someone goes with a big knife and cut his throat. And the marine. And the jugular. That's permissible. We still can eat that camel. It's tetki, it's mudakka, it's permissible to eat, it's the beeh. If someone didn't have, someone hit a sheep. You're driving to Turu, huh, in uh, somewhere a farm place, and uh, a sheep jump in front of you on the road, boom, you hit with your car. You go down, and the sheep's still breathing. Her eyes are open, she's paralyzed because you, you, you broke her uh, huh, spine. <laughs> can move, but she's breathing, her eyes moving, huh? you know she's alive. You go right back to your car, you grab your knife. I don't know why you have a knife in the car. But you grab the knife for protection. You grab the knife and you run to her and you're afraid if you're going to wait until you slaughter her, it's not going to be enough time. You go and you stab her right in the neck. Just like camel. That's fine. That's fine. Okay? Sure. And then we say fine. Fine, yeah, and fine to eat. All right? We're talking about that. So that is what it is. So what's okay to do dabh with? You can do nahr. What's okay to do nahr with? You can do dabh. All right? Good. Time. So what is the dalil on that? Huh? Hadith Adi ibn Hatim. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Amir al-dama bima shi'a. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, You just want the, the, the blood out. How? It's not an issue. Just make sure the blood starts gushing out. Alright? Subhanallah. Uh, what is the organ in the body that pumps blood? Heart. The Islamic way of slaughtering, because we will talk about uh, if he cuts the whole neck, if I separate the head from the body, is it still the We'll talk about that. But there is hikmah of going that far, not going all the way back. And the reason, or the hikmah, is listen to it. Their nerves come, big, two big nerves, huh? uh, come from the brain to the heart. Those two nerves, each side, one on each side, tell the heart to keep pumping blood. 
The doors are more to the back, more posterior. So when you slaughter, if you don't go, if you manage just to cut, and this comes with experience, if you just manage to cut whatever we said, huh? the throat and the esophagus and the, uh, the jugulars, and you don't severe those nerves, then the brain continues to send signals to the heart, keep pumping blood. So as long as the heart is still pumping blood and still functioning, the blood continues to gush out, continues to come out. So when you go all the way down and cut the whole neck, alas, there are no signals from the brain to the heart to shoot out because the brain giving signals to the heart, the brain still didn't know that you're going to die. So functionally, the brain job is to keep telling the heart, keep pumping blood for the body to survive. But the body, the brain, still haven't noticed that there are two main arteries, the jugulars here, open. So any blood the heart is pumping gonna come out. See the hikmah? No? Who taught Muhammad and that? That's what it is. Because the point, as we said, is the cap is to get the blood, as much blood as possible out of the body, out of the body, to make it clean. جاء في الصحيحين عن أسماء نحرنا فرسا أهدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأكلنا الفرس usually يذبح with the horse we usually cut the horse meat but Asma رضي الله in this hadith used what نحر يعني we did نحر and we know نحر for camel and we know horse has to be ذبح but the fact she said نحرنا the horse that means it's okay to interchange جاء في الصحيح أن رسول الله نحر في حجة الوداع عن نسائه البقر. Also in حجة الوداع the last حج the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or the only حج the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did he slaughtered cows on his the behalf of his wives. But they said نحر cow is usually ذب to cut the four things. That's the نحر is to stab in that area. But they said نحر the cows, which is interchangeably can be used as well. قال ويشترط Why is this so important? Because once you understand it, perhaps, perhaps can get and I cannot get you all the supermarkets in the world and tell you this one is okay, this one is in this one. We understand the principle and we apply. If the meat meets the requirements, then it's okay. And no one has the right to say it's haram without solid, clear proof. Now we need to understand, if the meat doesn't meet the requirement, then khalas, it's haram. And no one has the right to say it's halal. Clear? So we can be out of the headache. But it's really becoming an issue. Muslims today don't even know how to pray. And they're fighting amongst each other about this issue. And uh, يعني, what hurts you is the ignorance. The ignorance that everyone really speaks out of his own hour. He who eats only, as they call it, the biha or zabiha, he tells you every other meat is haram. Just because he's eating the biha. And if he wants to change and stop eating the bih and eat, perhaps his opinion will change. Because his opinion was never based on evidence. It was based on hawa. 
he who eats other meat, Publix, when Dixie, whatever, he will tell you it's all permissible. And perhaps he says that because of his hawa. He doesn't understand. He doesn't know the dalil. So we sitting here and as trying to be different or learn more than what the rest of people know, these students of now, we have to know. So the next time you say, this is zabiha, that's the only thing you can eat. You cannot eat the meat of public. But don't tell me the meat of in public is haram because they kill you. For example. If we have yaqeen that the meat in public is melta, is a dead animal, was never slaughtered, then no two people will differ that it's haram. But when you come and you tell me it's melta, and then I say, how you know? And you say, I heard. And I say, from who? You say, from people. And I say, people who work in the farm? You say, no. People who have experience about this? You say, no. People who contacted the farmers? and they ask, You say, no. And then you go and find it. The first person, Given the that is haram. That's a crime. Bigger than the crime of eating meat. Bigger than the crime of eating meat. Of to get that one on behalf of the Prophet without the meat. Man kadala. Huh? Did you hear a hadith that says or an ayah that if you eat pork you're in hell fine? Hmm? I don't remember. You know it's haram. Huh? You know it's very bad to eat it. But did you hear a hadith that says whoever lies about me intentionally let him assume his place in the whole time? Sure. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَتْكُمْ كَذِبًا هَذَا قَدَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ Allah calls it كَذِب Even if you're right. Very important. Even if you write with the fatwa you give, but you gave it out of your own I mean, is this permissible? You got 50 chance to be right. 50-50. If you say right, and if it's right, you got it. If you say wrong, because it's 50 here. Even if you said, I think it's right, you like it. Say I don't know. Stop it. it. Takes a lot of time. But if you say I don't know, but I think you are. Right. This is you. You know what the fatwa means? That you are signing. When you give the first word, you sign it for the half of all the money. So if you give the first you sign without getting the permission to sign, you're forging. It's a forger. You're lying. So very important to be careful. So we will, if we understand the basics, the foundations, why, when is, or what are the conditions for me to be halal, and what are the conditions for me to be haram, we're done. Then anyone who's going to say, or come to say, from the fundamentals and from the default, he's the one who's required to show the truth. I don't have to show you this meat is slaughtered this way and this. You're saying it's haram. The default says it's halal then you're required to bring a dalil to take it out of being possible. 
Because we said with foods, the, the, the default is halal. Now, what is this? Why? This meat slaughtered by a Hindu. You sure? Yes, I told you. A Hindu slaughter. The food, not the slaughtering of the Wataniyin, the slaughter of the people, the non Muslims, other than the people of the book, isn't haram, isn't halal. In the use of a Hindu slaughtering this meat, I will not eat it. But some people get confused. So he comes and he says, Brother, my mother family are Hindu. And they invited me for dinner. And I know eating the food of the Hindus is haram. Who told you? What you're not allowed to eat is what they slaughter. But what they're cooking doesn't necessarily mean they slaughter. Maybe they bought you. Maybe they got you the beef. So we need to distinguish between the one who's slaughtering and the one who's cooking. Completely two different stories. Hmm? Two different stories. Very important. So next time, inshallah, very important lecture, we will talk about the conditions for the biha to be considered halal. Okay? The, per, the conditions for a slaughtered animal to be considered permissible to eat. So those conditions met, alhamdulillah, it's all. Meat is halal. Those conditions are met, meat are met. Thank you.